Hello YouTube. So today I have a 13 Pro Max uh, and the rear camera as you can see is just not functional. It's all dark. Uh, so I'm going to first diagnose. I'm going to disconnect and then reconnect the flexes. If that doesn't fix it, then I have my replacement part right here. I'm going to walk you through and narrate basically step by step so that you can do this yourself. If you have no interest in doing this or if you think it's too difficult, I do take mail-ins. Um, now, that being said, all the tools that I will be using are, uh, there'll be, there's a link, I have an Amazon store, so if you want to support the channel, please help out, um, use those links. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Now, um, this is a scenario where we want to, uh, obviously the back is damaged, but the customer doesn't care about that. They're just going to get a different case so they can't see it. Um, but the most important or thing in this situation is removing the screen without damaging, which I'm going to show you right now. Um, but the general idea is uh, use a little bit of heat along the bottom um, and then using some isopropyl alcohol. Um, I use a Jimmy, uh, and then I had to sort of file down the edge just to make it so that it slots in easier. Um, if it doesn't slot in, uh, sometimes this will help where I'll push this way on the screen and then that helps out a little bit. But the number one thing is that you use, uh, isopropyl alcohol, 91 or 99%. And you just want to lift up extremely gentle. So I'll get probably maybe a third of the way up. Like maybe right here. And I can start to feel it come loose. And then I'll go to like, let's just say half. And I'll put some more alcohol in. The most difficult thing is getting past basically that corner right there. It's actually getting uh, past both corners. So then I will prop open the screen with my finger, drip some alcohol into the other corner. And that just slots in pretty easy. Now your uh, OLED flex is right about here. Or I'll point this out in just a sec. So the technique that I have to avoid a cutting technique, because your battery is right under here, you don't want to accident accidentally damage something, is I have a sort of turning motion rather than a cutting motion. Now you don't want, so if this is the Jimmy, you don't want the phone open more than about that much. Once again, our screen flex, you can see is right there. As you can see, our OLED is undamaged. I used to break OLEDs and then I stumbled across the ISO technique. I don't even use heat as someone probably noticed. And then you rock it back and forth once again. Touchscreen works. I don't know how that's loose. Where did that come from? It came from right there. I've actually seen loose screws damage OLEDs before. So you do wanna be careful so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tri wings, and then one, two, and three Phillips. Now, before we go disconnecting anything, our battery is right here. Just because your device is off, as long as your battery is connected, there's electricity running through the board. So as a preventative measure, you always disconnect your battery first and last. We can take our screen and set it aside.
as long as you're not using metal tools this shouldn't be an issue but you don't need a whole lot of effort these things just pop right out now as far as the camera goes i just push this way and then it comes up at a 90 degree angle then from here we just drop our camera back in now this only took me a few seconds um, but you still want to make sure that you didn't get any dust or debris in between your actual camera and the underside of the lens Now on wider flexes, I avoid pressing dead center. I like to press on the left, then right, or vice versa. This one is smaller, doesn't have that issue. Make sure your battery is disconnected. Connect our battery last. We get to test our camera, our portrait mode, front camera, everything works. Now in Apple's infinite wisdom, they leave you with this lovely message right here, uh, which is complete BS. The camera that I used is genuine. Um, there's no way around this outside of ordering one directly from Apple self-support, which I think as of this recording, last I checked, the camera alone is like 180 bucks. And then I think you get like a $30 credit, um, which is still just ridiculous because like the actual camera itself is a fraction of that. And all you have to do is, this is what most customers uh, come to the conclusion of is, oh my God, all I have to do is just deal with this stupid message and my camera works perfectly fine. Sure, I'll take that. I'm gonna throw a few more plates back in here. So there's a little tab right here, which just as long as you prop this in at a sort of 45 degree angle and then drop it down, our Phillips goes right here. Um, and then this next one, you wanna make sure that this goes in between If you don't do that, you can very easily crimp and then damage this cable, and that's not good. So I'm getting ahead of myself for just a sec. So let me open this up again. So screws have a bad habit of getting stuck on uh, basically anywhere that there's it's either sticky or magnetic, which would be your ear speaker, taptic engine loudspeaker, or along the perimeter gasket. Uh, you wanna line up as long as it's flush here, uh, then you can seat it, seat the screen along the sides. 